We are coming to you from the city beautiful Chicago, Illinois, where tonight WGN Sports presents White Sox Baseball. It's Jose Abreu, Melky Cabrera, Adam LaRoche in the Sox as they get set to butt heads with Andrew McCutcheon and Clint Hurdle's Pittsburgh Pirates. Hi, everybody, and welcome. I'm Ken Harrelson with Steve Stone as we get set to bring you the finale of this brief two-game set and the finale of what has been a four-game series against these Pirates. In the game last night, if you missed it, Johnny Danks gave up three runs in the first inning. Then after that, he settled down. He was just sensational. But we lost that ball game three to two. So we have lost six in a row. The Pirates on the other side of that page have won seven in a row. And tonight, they're running their ace out there. We haven't fared very well against our pitching staff. And the best of the bunch is going to the mound in Garrett Cole. He's 10-2 and two overall, his ERA 171. He's got an unbelievable slider. His velocity anywhere from 95 to 100 miles an hour depending on how he's feeling and so far he's been feeling awfully good. You take a look at the last five starts he's 5 and 0 is ERA point seven six you see the 40 strikeouts and the six walks and 35 and a third. This is a former first pick in the draft out of UCLA. He's an outstanding young pitcher but hopefully tonight our boys can get to him. Well, Melky Cabrera could be a big part of that equation because last night he got us on the board. We've been getting shut out and shut out and shut out, but he's starting to swing the bat well. We have to have our table setters set the table, and if that happens, things are going to go pretty well with the offense, and it's been Melky Cabrera doing a pretty good job over the last six games. Takes it down the line, and Adam Eaton, who was running on the play, scores from first base. That broke a 30-inning scoreless streak, and as you can see, Melky over the six-game hitting streak, hitting 391. A couple of doubles, a couple of runs batted in, and 23 at bats. And but two for four last night, especially from the right side, which has been his weak side, it shows some promise that perhaps Adam Eaton and Melky Cabrera are going to get it done, and then the guys in the middle can drive them home. All right. Why don't we win a ball game tonight? How about that? Sit back, relax, and strap it down. White Sox baseball coming your way. Chicago White Sox baseball is brought to you by Miller Lite, the original light pilsner. Cheers, it's Miller time. Honda Dream Garage sales event, now at your Honda dealer. Subway, make a smart plate for savory subs this season. Score more flavor at Subway restaurants. Subway, eat fresh. Ford, America's best-selling brand, inviting you to go further in our fuel-efficient vehicles. Check out our entire lineup at your Ford store or at localfordstores.com. And by your Chicago and Northwest Indiana Hyundai dealers, who invite you to test drive our award-winning lineup today. Visit buyhyundai.com.
Welcome back to U.S. Cellular Field. The White Sox have recalled right-hander Scott Carroll from Charlotte to pitch out of the bullpen. And to make room on the roster, Hector Nuese has been designated for assignment, which means they've got 10 days to make a deal for him or let him go on his way and maybe make his own deal. Earlier today, Robin Ventura explained why Carroll's a better fit for that bullpen role. Well, you can bring him in the middle of an inning. A uh, ground ball guy can get you out of that, plus continue on. Uh, Hector is more of he's, he's a starter, uh, really, so you have to bring him in for a, a, a clean inning. And uh, I think with as many lefties as we have, you want a guy that's more suited for, you know, sinker to be able to get some righties out, and that's what Scotty does. Stay tuned. We'll be back with tonight's lineup of the first pitch after these messages. Infinity, your home for the most live sports. It's a humid night in Chicago, 77 degrees at game time. No rain expected. And Jeff Samard is going to take the mound, trying to get out of some first inning woes. If he get through the first, things go pretty well for him, and we'll see just exactly what he does here this evening. So let's take a look at how Clint Hurdle is going to line up his Pirates for tonight. Josh Harrison leading it off. Starling Marte in the two spot playing left field. Then it's Andrew McCutcheon. Jung Ho Gung is playing third base. Pedro Alvarez getting a start at first. Gregory Polanco a start in right field with Jordy Mercer, Corey Hart, and Chris Stewart rounding it out. The defense and how they'll line up behind Jeff Samarja left to right. Melky Cabrera, Adam Eaton, and J.B. Shuck getting a turn in right field tonight. Connor Gillespie, Alexei Ramirez, Gordon Beckham, and Jose Abreu in the infield with Giovanni Soto behind the plate. And there's a look at Jeff Samarja, who's 4 and 4, ZRA 484, on for his 14th start. Opponents hitting 286, which is a rather high number for him, but he's gotten the ball over the plate just 16 walks and 70 strikeouts this year. The umpires for the game tonight. Dan Bellino behind the plate. The crew chief Tom Hallion is at first. Bruce Dreckman is at second. And Alfonso Marquez is at third. So Clint Hurdle, who's seen his team play some pretty solid baseball, so much so that they're sitting right behind the St. Louis Cardinals. And they've got a shot at it this year, as Clint believes that he's got the pitching staff and he's got just enough offense to get it done. Robin Ventura has seen his team lose six games in a row. They're 28 and 36, come in 10 games in back of. Kansas City, who's been red hot. Kansas City's won three in a row. They've won seven of their last ten. So they're throwing a ball around the infield, which means we're ready to play baseball, and that means I'm ready to turn it over to my play-by-play -play partner, Ken Harrelson. All right, Steve, thank you, and once again, good evening, everyone, and welcome to White Sox Baseball right here over WGN Sports. So if you could join us, as Josh Harrison. He has been swinging the bat well. In fact, in these three games against us, he is six for 11. 
And that ball hit high into right center field. Everybody looking for everybody else. And finally, finally, J.B. Shuck makes a catch. Well, Shuck is pretty much thinking that Adam Eaton is going to catch the ball. And he didn't catch it. So Shuck has to come over at the last instant. J.B. a little surprised. Makes the lunging grab. To say the least. And makes the catch. <laughs> then he looks over at Adam and wonders just exactly where he might have been. Jeff saying that ball really carried. Meanwhile, one pitch, one out, and here is Starling. Marte at 283. 12 homers, 45 knocked in. Well, it is humid and the wind is blowing out, so the ball is going to carry tonight, and it looks like it's going to carry every part of the ballpark. Lovely evening. A beautiful evening here in the city. Beautiful. One and one to count. Marte has faced Jeff 21 times and he has six hits. One and two. Through that fastball right by him inside up and out of the strike zone. Pretty good place for it. For some right handed hitters, that's one of the toughest pitches to lay off of. A fastball up and in. I would say up there, he's not going to catch up to it one way or the other. His best bolt would be to pop it up if he makes yeah. any contact at all. Most of the time, you don't. That's solid. He is 13 for 17 in stolen bases. The only thing is last night he hurt himself at first base and we're wondering just exactly how that ankle is going to be. He gets a splitter. You can actually see his foot start to go up stays down. He stays back with his hands. He took it into center field. He's a good good young hitter. And here's the heart the soul and the engine of this ball club right here. Andrew McCutcheon. Game plan's pretty simple on Jeff because he has a history of throwing strikes and because he has a history of giving up a lot of base hits on the first pitch. They're going up there swinging. They haven't done it tonight yet. They haven't made contact on the first pitch, not for a base hit. But over the last month, Opponents hitting 588 against him on the first pitch. Well, there's the paradox. Most important pitch in baseball is first pitch strike. And yet, when you're facing a guy that you know is going to throw first pitch strike, you have a much better chance of getting a base hit. That's what has been going these days for Jeff. He's got very good stuff. He usually throws better at home than he does on the road, and hopefully that holds true tonight. One out, the 0 2, pitch out, nothing on. This player team with 51 stolen bases, they've only been caught 26 times. Two balls, two strikes in here at the ballpark. 330 down the left field line, 335 down the right field line, 375 in the gaps, and 400 straightaway center.
There he goes. Good play by Beckham. As he gone, two down, but Marte with his 14th stolen base. So the ankle's not bothering him that bad. He got a good jump. And this throw is on the first base side of second. The swipe tag. Bruce Dreckman on a call says he did not get a piece of him. That's just a good play to keep him from going into center. And if he did indeed get him, and that's what Robin is going to say, they want to take a look at it. And it would be to strike him out, throw him out. Well, they got to have conclusive evidence. Usually, for guys we talked about, for guys like Beckham or Robin Ventura or one of those guys, of course, Robin, they didn't have a replay back then. But if he asked you to call it, to ask the manager to replay it, he was probably right. Gordon comes across. Now, if he did touch him, he got him well before his hand hit the bag. Bruce Dreckman says he didn't touch him. Now they'll have to look for conclusive proof. Of course, our boys would dearly like to strike him out, throw him out, and get over that first inning doldrum that they've been in as far as runs being scored. Gordon goes flying in the air, does the best job he possibly can. But it looked like there that he got him because of his glove. The thumb part of his glove went down. Watch his, watch his thumb part of the glove. Right there. Looked like it hit something. I like what Jeff is doing. There's no reason to stand out there. So Giovanni went back behind the plate. You don't know how long this is going to last as they review it in New York. So you want to make sure that. You're still staying loose on the mound. Because if they do say he's safe at second base, then you've got to get out of this first inning by retiring Gung. Gung with a two run homer in the first inning last night opposite field. Just a line shot right over that. If you missed that game last night, as we mentioned, Johnny Danks gave up three in the first. Leadoff double by Harrison, sacrifice left by Marte, RBI single by McCutcheon, and then this is just a bullet right over the fence into the bullpen area. Or not bullpen, but bullpen bar. And you have to remember that Major League Baseball has a couple of angles that we don't have. So. The one we have. It appears that he got it. This one is taking an inordinately long period of time. The thumb is the key here. Watch how the thumb. Right there, it just came off. And he got him. So a beautiful tag by Gordon Beckham. And that'll retire the side after happening a play. It's there goes nothing and the good guys coming to bat.
Adam meet leading it off with JB Shuck in the two spot. Jose Abreu at first. Then it's Adam LaRoche, Melky Cabrera, Alexi Ramirez, Connor Gillespie, Giovanni Soto, and Gordon Beckham rounding it out. The defense and on the lineup behind Garrett Cole, it's Marte, McCutcheon, and Polanco in the outfield with Gung, Mercer, Harrison, and Alvarez in the infield. Chris Stewart behind the plate and Garrett Cole on the hill. He's 10 and 2 this year. His ERA is spectacular, 171. 93 strikeouts, 19 walks in just 84 innings. So he's got a good hard slider. That's his best pitch. He's got a big fastball. He'll throw his curveball as a show me pitch, but when he goes to get to, it'll be with that slider. And before we show you our picks to click, you at home select yours as Adam Eaton gets set to lead it off. Gold is 24 years old, 6'4, 230 pounds. So far, having a very lucky season. That's one of those streaks where they go out there and the other team just didn't feel like hitting that night. Two and one. You can see with wins, he's first in the National League. ERA first, strikeouts sixth. That's in the hole. The jump, no. So that's a good way to start it. They're playing him up the middle. And on a 97 mile an hour fastball, he takes it the other way. And Mercer, even if he gets that throw off, he's not going to get eaten at first base. So he did a nice job of getting to it, but that was it. So here's JB hitting at 281. No homers. He's driven in five. Watch out. The ball's all the way back. Now we'll have to see if that's a wild pitch. And it is indeed a wild pitch. So Cole with his fourth wild pitch. That one almost got it's JB like in the leg. Chris just whiffed on that one. Now, JB, whole posture has to change. And a count 2 and 0. That even strengthens his approach now. We saw it last night. Harrison let off with a double. Marte, who's been swinging the bat, had a sacrifice bunt to get him to third. We anticipate that Chuck will be trying to do everything he can to pull the ball. Otherwise, they wouldn't have Mercer charge as a man to hold Eaton close to second base because there's a huge gap on the left side of the infield. Well, hitters know for the most part after they see a fastball, have a much better idea. And so forget about the bunt. Other times, a guy will know that guy's a little quick. And said, well, you know, I'm just going to lay this thing down. Wouldn't have been a particularly bad idea. But a 98 mile an hour fastball up and in, stuff to do much with. So with one out, let's check in our picks to click. Commands you are directing the crew. Well, they went with Alexi. He's going with Adam Eaton. Terry Hanley, Eric Aldridge, Mike Williams, Roger Clare, and I. We're going to go with Melky. As here is a Brayu. 
hitting at 283, 12 homers and 40 driven in. Some guys are. Believe it or not, are easier to try to hit than try to bunch. And other guys are just the opposite. They're easier to bunt than it is to try to hit. We mentioned the guy last night during that game. It was almost impossible to bunt. Because there's a comebacker and two out. That was Mike McDougal. So it's up to Adam. Adam has faced Cole three times and he has drawn a collar. Adam at 238 homers and 24 knocked in. Outfield playing straight away and very deep all the way around. Infield. Well, Mercer can't play him as a dead pull hitter because he's got a Keep eating close at second. And boy, just almost this. I'll say a C, but a big lake of red. Went to Macy's this morning down in South Bend. It was unbelievable how much Blackhawk stuff they had in that store. Everything. Is there's a strike. Right at the bottom of the zone. So one and one to count. It looks like the parade today around downtown. Everybody wearing Blackhawks gear. And if you wore the Blackhawk gear to the park tonight, you got a $15 ticket. Chris Stewart with a nice pick right there. Take a look at the event at Soldier Field. Always an electric moment. Now that's to see it rip. And a breaking Woo! ball strike. That was a backdoor breaking ball. Not his best slider, but one that he'll just try to drop over the outside corner to a left hand hitter. When he goes to get him, it's going to be the hard slider down and in. Like the one he threw to Shuck to strike him out. So we get a man in second base with nobody out, and he stands right there.
So here is Gung. Takes first pitch strike. Jung Ho Gung. Last year, 40 home runs over in Korea, 117 RBIs. Had a few finals around baseball today. Angels beat the D back seven to one. That's foul back. Padres over Oakland three to one at the Coliseum. Houston doubled up the Rockies in Denver eight to four. Phillies beat Baltimore two to one. At Citizens Bank. Minnesota beat the Cardinals two to one at Target Field. That's up high. After one in Kansas City, Royals leading Milwaukee two nothing. Bottom of the third in Cleveland, Indians leading the Cubs two to one. That's into left field. One out. Join us for Selfie Sunday on June 21st at 10:15. First 500 fans to purchase a special ticket offer can join us on the outfield warning track of U.S. Cellular Field and take selfies with select players. Visit WhiteSox.com/selfie Sunday for tickets and more information. So here's Pedro Alvarez. Hitting at 234. 10 homers, 28 knocked in. Former Pirate number one pick. Oh, and to the count. Elvis has got some big power. Was initially a third baseman. They moved him over to first where he feels more comfortable over there. And they got a shift on for him. Count evens at two. They usually platoon Alvarez and Polanco. They're hitting back to back in the lineup tonight. Two nothing Kansas City lead over Milwaukee. Kendrys Morales has an RBI. It's number 43 for him. So big pickup for the Royals. Full count. Had him 0 2. Here's look at Gregory Polanco. Came up last year. Still very raw. But very talented. <laughs> Alvarez, because of all of that power, earned himself the number two pick in the country in 2008. Alive, and this is going to be at the very least a nine pitch at bat. There you can see he threw a lot of pitches low. Those are the splitters. Now you try to get him with some fastballs. And that one way off the outside corner. He's still able to stay alive.
All right, chopper. Two down. And that'll bring up Polanco. That last of bat, a good battle. Samardu went 10 pitches deep, finally got him, and kept him in the infield. Polanco came up last year. It's safely in his first 11 games. That's an all time pirate record for a guy making it to the big leagues and starting the beginning of his career. That's foul back. And that Astro shortstop Carlos Correa today became the second youngest player on behind only Ricky Henderson in the last 100 seasons. Steals three bases in the game. That's a nice snap. And a nice one, two, three inning. We'll go to the bottom of the second, no score. to WGNTV.com and click on the WGN Sports Game Zone banner for the latest stats and information. Sox Game Zone is powered by Robert Morris University, Illinois, offering over 55 athletic teams more than any other university in the state. For more information on RMU, visit robertmorris.edu. Melky Cabrera to lead it off. It'll be Cabrera, Ramirez, and Gillespie. Takes first pitch inside. Melky has faced Garrett Cole three times and has one hit. It was two for four last night. And that's going to be souvenir left side. Getting back to Correa, Astros manager A.J. Hinch says Correa has a green light to run when he feels it's necessary. You don't give a rookie that quick. Who's six foot four you, as a rule the green light to run, but he has. Two and one to count. Now feel slightly to the left. They are spread out. Bit of a gap out there in left center. And Polanco well off the rock line and right. And feels straight up. 2 2. Has a little defensive swing. Got the job done. The pitch was a good pitcher's pitch right on the outside edge of the outside corner. Oh, so let's see what 
Chris Stewart wants. Yeah, he went to the fastball, the slider, fastball, fastball, location. I love it. A little gamesmanship going on. Wants the slider. Actually, pretty good pitch to hit. Got it on his uh, corner, but it was still away from him just a hair. So the count hangs at two and two. Oh, last year, 11 and five in 22 starts, his ERA 365. Serp noticed that he was ready to become something special. Comes a fastball. And he knocks it down, picks it up, and throws him out. So one down. There's nothing that Cole can't do. He's a good fielder. He's a very good hitter and a good base runner. Learning his baseball at UCLA, talking to Neil Huntington, their general manager. He says that he was taught very well by his folks. Who helped guide him through that program at UCLA? They taught him very well there. He said he's got everything disposition wise that a number one starter could have. That's why they picked him number one in the draft. Not to mention a great arm that kind of goes along with that number one selection. Here's Ramirez at 230, a couple of homers, 24 knocked in, and that's the soft ground ball. Takes a nice little cantini bounce down to Gung. So two out. And that'll bring up Gillespie. Connor pitch hit last night in the seventh inning in a 3 2 ball game. Tried to bunt. See, I think shocked a few people. Fastball at 95. Two and nothing. Ventura of Kansas City goes on the deal with numbness in his hand. Inflammation of his ulna nerve. And that's ball four. So the first walk <laughs> issued by Garrett Cole. And here's Soto. Giovanni, one for three against Garrett Cole. That one over the outside corner. One and one to count. Giovanni 0 for 3 last night. First and third. Gio. Side. We're into the third, no score.
Getting around Father's Day, and that can only mean one thing, and that is it's the home run challenge. The challenge that will eventually defeat prostate cancer. And Michael, you've raised $45 million to fight cancer, prostate cancer, and research for it. Tell us a little bit about the home run challenge and how it works. Well, 20 years ago, I was having breakfast with a young Jerry Reinsdorf. And we talked about the fact that men don't get checked for prostate cancer. And unlike most life-threatening disease, there was actually a simple blood test that gave you an early warning system. And so the idea was come out to the ballpark. Come out with your dad and remind him to get checked for prostate cancer, your friend, your buddy. And that was the idea. And this has turned into the number one awareness program in the world, not just baseball. And the month that most men get checked for prostate cancer happens to be July, right after Father's Day. Well, I think it's absolutely unbelievable in the fact that the percentages of prostate cancer fatalities have gone straight downhill. Now, sure, it has a whole lot to do with this, but tell us about those percentages and just exactly where it is these days. Well, as you know, one in two men get some form of cancer. One in seven men get prostate cancer. But what's occurred here is first, early detection has substantially dropped the death rate. And the money we've raised, there are six new drugs on the market. So those that failed surgery, failed radiation, now have really good opportunities to put their cancer into suspended animation. And the probability that a man who's diagnosed with prostate cancer is going to live five years or longer is now 99%. Tell us a little bit about how our fans can participate in this because quite obviously if you raise 45 million there's a lot of work to be done still. There is and we've raised 15 times so the 45 turned into 600. And you can go to PCF.org. We know a lot about nutrition, what you should eat and not and those programs are there. Or go to homerunchallenge.org. And so those you'll, you'll be able to pledge and so the idea was come to the game and pledge money for every home run you can hit. Well, the big problem here that we've seen is that the Sox offense lately hasn't been tuning it up. So if you're pledged per home run, you haven't had to spend a whole lot of money yet. But that well, means it goes through Sunday. Well, but you can pledge for all home runs in baseball. And right now we're at 124. We think we're going to end around 200 with a late streak by the White Sox here. So if you pledge $10, that would turn into $2,000. Pledge a dollar, two hundred, and we will double everything you give. And so we are very optimistic that prostate cancer will become a chronic disease, not a life-threatening disease. And there's 15 million people today and around the world that are living well with cancer. In just the United States, most of them are living normal lives today. Well, Michael, thank you very much. It's a wonderful idea. It's a wonderful execution of it because, as we know, it's working. It's getting better all the time. And... We wish you a well, and we wish you a lot of home runs. And how about that double play there? What do you think about that? And out of the inning, and we'll head to the bottom of the third inning in this scoreless game. Thank well, you, Michael. I want to thank the Sox and Jerry Reinstorf. And 20 years later, I'm the happiest guy to be in the ballpark.
Then back to the top of the order with Eaton and JB Shuck. 0 2 0 for them, 0 1 0 for us. We missed the finale of this brief two game set and what has been an extended four game series against Pittsburgh. First pitch strike. Got in on him, ate him up. Mercer. One out. Mercer gets rid of the ball very quickly. And he comes in, charges the ball, rounds off his charge so that he can get rid of it quickly. That compensates for an arm that's not overwhelming at shortstop, but as his manager has said many times, all Jordy does is make the play. It's not spectacular. Not going to knock your eyes out with his ability, but he makes all the plays. Adam had an infield single between third and short. Mercer got there, got the ball, but could not make the throw. Adam takes it up high. That's high and pretty deep in the center field. Two down. Northwest Indiana Sox fans night is tomorrow when the Sox take on the Rangers. The White Sox are offering specially priced tickets to all Indiana residents, their families, and their friends. To purchase tickets, visit whitesox.com slash NWI Sox fans. Here's Chuck. He struck out his first trip. Takes first pitch strike. That fastball at ninety six off the inside corner. That one's off the inside corner and called a strike. So the count one and two. That's a fair ball, Stewart. Quick release makes a good play, as does Alvarez. And that's a quick one, two, three inning, and we're into the fourth.
today is you might be today's White Sox fan of the game. White Sox fan photo of the game is brought to you by Beggar's Pizza now with 22 locations. Visit beggarspizza.com. Beggar's Pizza, they lay it on thick. Top of the fourth inning and a scoreless tie. It'll be the top of the order. As through the first three, Samarja has faced just the minimum thanks to a strike him out, throw him out, double play in the first. And the double play turned last inning. So here's Harrison. He hits the first pitch of the ball game. Or swung at it. And he went out to right field. Takes first pitch strike. That's in the right. Come on, can't get there. So the leadoff single softly served in the short right field. Harris has been doing that in all four games against us. Got a big smile on his face because he caught one way out of the strike zone, hit it off the end of the bat, and just guided it into right field. Good plate coverage. He stands off the plate, steps toward the plate, and it's a leadoff single. Well, he's taking care of his mechanics with that setup he's got at the plate. If you're standing off the plate, you've got to go towards the plate. That gives you better plate coverage on a pitch away. The irony of standing close to the plate, you have less coverage on an outside corner pitch or a pitch just off the outside corner. That's fair ball. Can't turn it on the, the speedy Marte. Hunter did a nice job of making sure that throw to Gordon Beckham was right there. He came over toward the line on this little chopper. It's fair, as you can see, Alfonso Marquez. The throw is right to Beckham. Perfect throw. But unfortunately, on a slow developing chopper, you're not going to be able to cut down the speedy Marte on the back end of two. So here's Andrew McCutcheon struck out. He wants to make sure that Marte has got his base running glove on. That's why he was giving him some extra time. Close didn't get it. In the five game hitting streak as you can see Andrew McCutcheon has been awfully good. But he's normally awfully good although he got off to a very slow start and you can see that glove on the right hand. Making sure he protects his fingers when he goes in head first. And also comes in handy when you're reaching for a muffin out of the oven. Out and around it, yanks it. Rick Sofield just able to get out of the way of it. That fastball was a good three, four inches inside, and yet he was able to get his hands out and hit the ball pretty hard. Another one yank foul. Out 
Alfield. Just about straight away. And look at this. We're talking about two little duck snorts. There's a throw to third. So two little bitty broken bat duck snorts. They have men on first and third and one out. This ball is also off the outside corner. I mean, this is way off the outside corner. So Martin made a pretty good pitch, but McCutcheon just went out, dumped it into right field, so runners at the corners. JB comes up, he's got a pretty good arm. Throws it a bit off the mark. And fortunately, McCutcheon did not take off and go to second. So here's Gum. He went out to Melky in left field. Okay. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Perfect double play ball. And Jeff's mad at himself because he forgot exactly where Gordon Beckham was because it would have been two and out of the inning instead. He keeps the inning alive and the Pirates get on the board. You see where Beckham is. If you know where it is, you're going to leave this ball alone. It's a reflex action that a good fielder will make, but probably shouldn't. And it is a base hit run batted in. 25th by Gung. So here's Alvarez. Had an extended at bat. Back in the second before grounding out on a chopper to back. And that's up high. That was one of the big factors that the Pirates didn't know about Alvarez was how he was going to make the transition from third base to first base. We've seen tonight where he's made a very good play at first that he seems to have made the transition rather easily. Situation with first and second, only one out. The Pirates have scored 42% of the time. League average right at 40, so that's right in the neighborhood. Sox pitchers have given up a run 36% of the time. That's a touch below league average. Snap, take your time. That boy. He took his time, made a good throw. But they do get a run. And we'll go to the bottom of the fourth. It is one nothing Pirates.
20th will receive a White Sox baseball cap presented by the private bank. The private bank we solve for X. Purchase your tickets today by visiting whitesox.com slash promos. Abreu, LaRoche, and Cabrera to face Garrett Cole. 24 year old, 6'4, 200. 30 pound right hand. Breaking ball up high. This one of the few curveballs that he's going to throw. He does it just to get ahead. But it doesn't work very well if you don't get it over the plate. And there is a little duck snort of ours. So now he's going to make the turn. And the throw is high. He's in there with a double. That's his tenth two bagger. Good base running by Jose. He realized that there was no way that Alvarez could get to it. And this ball was slicing off the end of the bat. He knew that it was slice away from Polanco. So with the play right in front of him, you don't need a first base coach to tell you what to do here. He figures he can outrun the arm of Polanco, and he was right. This ball's spinning into foul territory. And he's in easily. And here's Adam. Adam struck out his first trip. One nothing Pirates here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Be nice to play a little baseball 101. 21 to count. Off the inside corner. with that fastball at 97. Got to make him get the ball down for that fastball. Hard to fight gravity on a high 97 mile an hour heater. Nice pick by Chris Stewart. Full count. To Adam. Palmer. Socks. Chris Stewart. Nice young man. Well, he's a veteran now, 33. Yes. Melky's on deck. Is it just in front of the fence, but it'll get the job done. Abreu moves into third. He just missed it. Chases McCutcheon all the way back to the wall. Had a good at bat, the eighth pitch of the at bat. Andrew makes the catch easily, but not before. 
Jose can scamper into third base. Catching if it's anywhere in the ballpark, he's probably going to get it. So here is Cabrera. He had a hard comebacker to Cole that knocked it down, picked it up, and threw him out. Infield in. And that slider. Nasty. With the runner at third and only one out, the Sox have delivered at least one run 73% of the time with the league average at 68, and the Pirate pitchers have yielded one 82% of the time. So 89 mile an hour slider, 97 mile an hour fastball, and the count is 0 and 2. Short stroke in Melky. And wide at 98. All right. He can throw. Safe. And this game is tied at one. Cabrera gets the job done, as did. Adam LaRoche. RBI number 23 as Melky gets enough of this slider. Takes it out to Polanco. He makes a good enough effort. But not quite good enough. Two fly balls. Have led the way to a tie at one. So here's Alexei. His fourth sacrifice flight is here for Melky. Alexei bounced out to Gong at third base. Good check. And that's into left center field. What a catch. If it's going to stay in the ballpark, that young man right there from Lakeland, Florida, is probably going to catch it. But. We get a run and we'll go to the fifth tight at one.
And Andrew McCutcheon. He closes a lot of ground very quickly and a full out dive takes it right off the grass and robs Alexi of at least one, possibly two bases. The speed replay is brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Blanco Mercer Hart. Here in the top of the fifth. That's the bonnet. A particularly good technique as he was running out of there. And couldn't make a whole lot of contact. Yes, he did. And the count one and two. Pretty good pitch on that change up and didn't get it. Lays off that one just out of the zone and a full count. He gone. One out. Got him looking down with that splitter and threw a high fastball by him. And that one in the zone. Can't catch up to it up there. Strikeout number three. Here was number two. Jordy Mercer struck out leading off the third. Takes first pitch strike. Got away with one right there. To the count. And in case you did not hear, Sox designated Hector Nowesi for assignment and brought back up Scott Carroll. Lays off that one. Nice job of staying alive there. Once again, a pitch that was well out of the zone. Jeff hasn't walked anybody yet. That's one of the reasons why his pitch count is not overwhelming. He's at the 60 mark. Two two pitch. Ball hit deep in the right field. Slicing, slicing. And foul.
Knocks it down. And can't get him. So that'd be a hit. Jeff's a good fielder, and he's not having an easy night of it. That time he did knock it down, but he couldn't locate it. Gets him in the leg and then looks around, can't find the baseball. By the time he does, Mercer gets down there to beat the play. So here's the DH big Corey Hart. Had a soft single to center. Mercer two for two in stolen bases. First pitch strike. Corey thought that ball was low and out of the zone. Fortunately, Dan Bellino thought it was good enough. You can make a case either way. Shanks that one in the right field. Well, Jeff has given up some of the softest hits you'll ever see tonight. He is not pitching in good luck to this point as Corey Hart barely able to ease it by Beckham. As that ball trickles into right, Mercer goes all the way to third. So making some good pitches, that ball was up and in, and somehow Hart was able to get just enough on it. So that'll bring up the catcher Chris Stewart who went into a 5 4 3 double play to end the third inning. Yeah. Major League note of interest. Alex Rodriguez single in the fifth inning. He now has 2,999 hits. And that's a little tardy, and that ball's out of play. 2,999 hits. Stewart has one sacrifice and one sacrifice fly this year. Outfielder short. Slide it to the right. And that pitch off the outside corner. They've actually had some remarkable performance out of their catching duo. Cervelli and Stewart. Cervelli came in hitting 316. Stewart hitting 290 when the game started. Yeah. Nice Ooh. pitch right on the outside corner. Can't ask for much better than this. Watch where the three appears. Outside corner, just about knee high. Perfect, perfect pitch. These Pittsburgh hitters, in the four games we have seen them, are showing some remarkable plate coverage. There's Clint Hurdle in the middle. Pretty good manager. That hit him. So that'll load him up. That was the last thing that Jeff wanted. As he sailed that fastball up and in. Didn't get much of Stewart, but he got enough of him. You can hear it from up here as it hits off. His hand. That's going to bring Don Cooper out to talk with Jeff. 
And we'll check some scores for you in that Yankee game. They're at home hosting Miami. That game is tied at three, bottom of the seventh, with Alex Rodriguez one hit away from 3,000. Tampa Bay leading Washington five to three. Bryce Harper had to leave that ball game, injury to his leg. Toronto leading the Mets seven to one. That's bottom of the eighth up in Canada. Boston shutting out Atlanta two nothing. Top of the sixth down in Georgia. We mentioned Minnesota beat St. Louis two to one. Angels thumped the D back seven to one in Phoenix. San Diego beat Oakland three to one at the Coliseum. Carlos Correa stole three bases as Houston doubled up the Rockies 8 4 in Denver. But here we go. Harrison is going out to right. Good catch by J.B. Shuck, and he has a little duck snort single into right field, right off the end of the bat. Sacks packed with Pirates. Takes ball one. Harrison's only grounded into two double plays this year. But the Sox infield looking for a ground ball. They're halfway looking for two. And there you look at not a whole lot of speed on the base paths. But they're loaded up. Adam getting in shape. And it's a 2 1 game. Mercer with a an infield single off the leg of Samarja. Duck snort of the poster child kind by Corey Hart. Hit by a pitch. And a sacrifice fly by Harrison, knocking in his 22nd run. Well, Harrison realized that he most likely would benefit from hitting the ball in the air, so he waited to get something up. And hit just his second sacrifice fly of the year. First pitch strike to Stalling Marte, who had a soft single in the center his first trip, then hit into a 5 4 fielder's choice. Over the last eight games, Marte has been red hot. Hardest hit base that they have tonight was that one off the leg. Of some margin by Mercer. The rest of them have been absolute spend some meal money hits. But the way we've been scoring, we'd take some of those. Up by Geo as he digs one out of the dirt. Make sure that that third run 90 feet away can't score. Corey Hart with pretty good secondary lead at third, just looking for one of those splitters in the dirt. Two on, two out, two balls, two strikes. He gone. Some soft hitting gets the job done as they score halfway home trailing. We are two to one.
Com, sponsored by Jeff Vukovic, your local nationwide insurance agent serving the area for 37 years. To join the nation, visit JeffVuk.com because Nationwide is on your side. It's a 2-1 Pirate lead here in our half of the fifth inning. Nice crowd on hand. They have been into it. Seeing a couple of good right-handers go after one another. So for us, it'll be Gillespie, Soto, and Beckham, lower third of our order. Takes that pitch downstairs. Connor walked. Only walk issued by Garrett Cole. Well, that was back in the second inning. Count evens at one. Chase is a that pitch, a pitcher's pitch right there. That is one and two. He did. Sox fans, join us on Saturday, July 4th at 110 as your White Sox take on the Orioles. First 20,000 fans will receive a Bobby Jenks World Series moment bobblehead presented by Comcast Sportsnet. For tickets, call 866 Sox Game or visit whitesox.com slash promos. Geo takes that pitch going away. Hits the ball hard, but Pedro Alvarez made a nice play on him at first base. And he's got the Kenbird seat, 2 0. Soft comebacker. So a strikeout. A little ground ball in front of the mound and two down. We'll bring up Gordon Beck. The end of the bat, and it's splinters. Coming into the night, these two teams had met all time 29 times with our Sox winning 17 of them. This season it's been kind of dismal. The Pirates undefeated at 3 0. They're batting average at 320. The runs per game, 5.7. Pretty good pitch, didn't get it. So two out, one and two to count. And make your plans to be with us starting tomorrow night. Three game series against the slugging Texas Rangers to finish up this homestand. Chris Sale on the bump for us against. Kobe Lewis. Foul tipped, hung on two. One, two, three inning. He now has four strikeouts, and we're into the sixth.
It'll be McCutcheon, Gum, and Alvarez to face Samarja. There's a slider strike. McCutcheon has struck out and then hit one miles down the bat for a little duck snort in the right field. Way out in front on that one in the count of 0 2. And I mentioned Chris Sale on the bump tomorrow night. First of that three game set against Texas. Now, if you can't make it to the ballpark, that game will be over Comcast Sports. Now. Then on Saturday, Nick Martinez, right hander, going for them to be announced for us. And that game also on Comcast Sports. Now. Then in the finale of that series in this homestand on Sunday, right back here over WGN, Jose Quintana against Giovanni Gallardo. Gallardo. Just got a piece of it. Six and six with a 3.16 ERA. Talking about Chris, he's joined Hall of Famers, Pedro Martinez, Randy Johnson. He's the only pitcher since 1914. Ball hit sharply. Back one out. But since 1914, only three pitchers to strike out 12 or more batters in at least four straight starts. So the K zone will be buzzing tomorrow night. Here's gum. He had an infield single and an RBI. Oh and two. They have two runs on seven hits, no errors. We have one run on two hits and no errors. Our two hits, talking about softly, had a meeting in the infield single, and then Abreu hit a little duck snort over the head of Alvarez at first for a double. Some good stuff coming off that mound with Samarja and Cole. One and two. I'm pretty much a dead fastball hitter, and that's one of the things you have to be aware of if you're going to go at him with that. Good to set him up with the fastball and wipe him out with either the splitter or the slider. Lexi. Nice play. Two down. He charges this ball knowing it's slowly hit. And guns it across to get him. Want to know the count to Alvarez? Grinded out softly to second, then hit a hard comebacker to Smarja, who turned it in to a double play.
Well, that one straight back. That was a good fastball. He kept it well in on the hands of Alvarez. He really couldn't get his arms out at all. As you look at pretty impressive numbers, even though there's seven hits, they haven't squared up too much against a big right hander. He's had good stuff tonight. Twenty one thousand two hundred ninety six but there's more fannies and seats than that in the ballpark. He's trying to throw him fastballs in on his hands and so far Alvarez can't get to him. Got to that one nails it for a. Single. Well, that's the first mistake that he made to Alvarez because he got that ball down and out over the plate. And unlike the steady succession of pitches inside, this one is very hittable for a left hand hitter. Here's Gregory Polanco. Did a comebacker to Jeff and then struck out swinging on a fastball. He's just 23 years old. Well, Gio goes out there making sure that he and Jeff are thinking along the same lines. Blanco actually hits better on the road than he does at home, which is somewhat surprising. You don't find a lot of hitters do that. A lot of foul balls tonight off some margin. Jeff is sneaking up on 100 pitches, number 97 forthcoming. Two out, two balls, two strikes. Like one more high fastball will end this at bat. Gonna take something off it. Full count. Jordy Mercer, the on deck hitter. And Abreu is gonna move behind Alvarez. At least by a step or two, get a little better angle if he pulls the ball down that way. He gone. Back. We'll go to the bottom of six, trailing by one.
Project Subway to 97999 right now for your chance to win six meals from the Simple Six menu from Subway. Message and data rates may apply. Subway, eat fresh. All right, boys. Let's get something going. Top of the order. Eaton, Chuck, and the Brayu. Takes up high ball one. Adam had that infield single leading off the bottom of the first. Then hit a ball pretty deep into center field in the third. Got the corners in close. Gum on the grass. And Adam with a 2 0 count. And Alvarez well off the line at first, but in close. Alfield swung around slightly to the left. They're spread out. Don't help him out. 3 0. There's one. Ooh. High strike is called. So three and two. He's at the top of the strike zone. And that's ball four, so the dreaded leadoff walk. Hey, Sox fans, the Xfinity Fundamentals deck overlooks left field at U.S. Cellular Field. It's accessible from the 100, 300, and 500 levels. Learn baseball fundamentals from Chicago White Sox training academy coaches in batting and pitching. You can also use the cages, the base running areas, and more. It's all from Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Here's Chuck, a uh, strikeout. And he hit a little nubber out in front of the plate that Chris Stewart jumped on and threw him out at first base. First and 30. Huge gap out there in left center if he can find it. So far, he has not been able to handle the fastball of Garrett Cole. Blanco well off the line and right. There he goes. There's a throw. Safe. So he picks up his fifth stolen base. And I'm got a very good jump because Stewart got rid of this ball quickly. It's a tough ball to handle. It's down in the dirt. But he gets the right hand in and then the left hand in before he was tagged by either hand of Mercer's. Well, we've the same song, second verse. We had this one back in the first inning. Adam at second, nobody out. We ended the inning with him at second, nobody out is there. Now that's going to get the job done. So the sacrifice. Five free. Good bunt by Shuck. Perfect bunt, forcing Gung to go to first base. He had no other choice. So the stolen base and then the sacrifice leaves it up to Jose to drive home the tying run. Jose is one for two, and he scored our only run. That little soft double just over the head of Alvarez at first base. Perfect bot. Infield in. Right side on the grass. There's at 97. High and wide.
Gong's going to hold a runner on the two hopper. Two out. Jose just a little over anxious with the infield in. He swung at a pitch low and out of the zone and rolled over the top of it. Yeah, got a little chopper to go. So far, not a whole lot of pressure on Garrett Cole. You only give up two hits and you're into the sixth inning. You can get by with under 80 pitches to this point. Adam has struck out and gone deep to center, taking McCutcheon back up against the wall. So one in the dirt, Garrett. Woo. That one in 97, letter high for a strike. The fly ball that Adam hit moved along Abreu to third base, setting up the sacrifice fly by Cabrera. So that was good execution in the fourth. Big pitch right here, the 1-1. One, one. Good rip just underneath it. Two and two the count. Stewart is a good receiver. Always has been. And coming into this game. Pretty good with the lumber hitting at 290. Cabrera on deck in the payoff pitch. And that is ball four. And here comes Melky. Third walk issue by the big right hander. Melky 0 for 1 with a sacrifice fly, picking up his 23rd RBI. Looks like that bullpen is starting to stir for Pittsburgh, although nobody's throwing quite yet. You have a lot of relievers getting up and starting to loosen up. He looked like he swung at that to stop from getting hit by him. That ball was way up and in off the plate. <laughs> Not the best form, but it didn't hit him. On that fastball, Evans accounted one. Thank you. Now, if he was a good pitch to hit, put a good pass on it. Meanwhile, it's one and two. Melky, despite not having a real good year to this point. Still hitting up close to 300 with runners in scoring position. And 
that's going to be in the seats for a souvenir left side. Short lead by Adam. And that ball hit in the left center field. They got a good one out there to make the catch. And we threatened. We've had a man a second once again with nobody out. And couldn't get him home. Jordy Mercer takes a slider strike. Jordy, a strikeout and an infield single. Yeah, two runs on eight hits. We have one run on <clears throat> hits. He said we hit softly. Got two of them. Like say. <laughs> and before the game, Steve and I had an opportunity to have dinner with some people who got us in an auction. Really nice. Really nice. David Schramm, Gwen, Jared, Drew. The Shram family. And they're from Bloomington, Illinois, originally before they now made their home in western Iowa. Still remain very loyal Sox fans. They said actually it was a thrill of a lifetime, but we know they've lived a sheltered life. They are certainly nice people. That's a high pop up. And nobody took control. And so when nobody takes control, the ball falls. And actually, in that situation, the center fielder is the captain on the play. Wow. Boy, if our pitchers didn't have any bad luck, they wouldn't have any luck at all. Well, I think Alexi just took a look at Adam Eaton and said. I think you got to take control on that. They look at one another. Yeah, I got it. You take it. 
And nobody gets it. So Hart's aboard. And here's Stewart. He's 0 for 1. He also was hit by a pitch. Count. They have been a few times in the last week and a few times this year. That I would just love to have been able to cuss. Oh, and to the count. There was a time when Corey Hart could steal some bags. 25 of them two years in a row, but that was a few knee surgeries ago. These days, not quite as quick. Outfield around to the right, gap out there in left center. He gone. For what should have been a one, two, three inning, but it's not, and that'll bring up Harrison. Jeff has really had good stuff tonight. And you look at that board, you see nine hits, and you really can't believe it because he's thrown so much better than that. You boil it down to hard hit balls, and there's been very few. Harrison is one for two with a sacrifice fly. That one finds the hole. So the Inning continues. We're going to be happy when we don't see Pittsburgh anymore, largely because we don't have to look at Harrison very much. He's been an excellent hitter in these four games. Going to send Don Cooper out. Talk to Jeff on what he wants to do with Marte. But Harrison got good play coverage, very aggressive hitter. And Jake Patrichka getting the call, loosening up in the pen is Jeff Samarja at the 108 pitch mark. Marge's last outing against Tampa Bay had some of the same luck. Some very soft hits that fell in. And some bad defense. Behind him. And there's first pitch strike to Starling Marte. Jose Tabata comes out to pinch run. Last time out, we lost that ball game 5 4 and just absolutely gave them two runs. For Jeff. <laughs> two on, two out, two on one to count. Did a long way, unfortunately, slicing away from JB as he ran into the corner. The sale certainly is back. Cantana's pitching well. Carlos had a tough outing the other last time out. Thanks. 
after the first inning last night was just outstanding. Samarja is definitely back. But it's hard to win a game when you're not getting but two hits. Two hits in this particular inning where he should be sitting on the bench watching his offense instead of being out there and extending himself to pitch 114. We got four hits last night. Two so far. There they go. He gone. He pitches out of it. Seventh inning stretch. We trail it two to one. Around Major League Baseball. As you check it, Aaron, Xfinity. Tail of the tape. 210 and 0 for them, 1 2 and 0 for us. It'll be Ramirez, Gillespie, and Soto to face Garrett Cole looking for his 11th victory against two defeats. Garrett coming in with a 1.71 ERA. Alexei's 0 for 2, and he was robbed of a base hit on a beautiful catch by who else but Andrew McCutcheon. One one pitch. Pulled off of it a little bit. But Mercer guns it over. And that's out number one. <laughs> Provide your guests with the ultimate all-inclusive White Sox experience in the home plate club or Magellan Scout seats. These two premium seating areas are the best way to entertain your most important clients, employees, friends, or family. For more information, call 312-674-1000 or visit whitesox.com slash premium seating. Gillespie has walked and struck out. And he just missed that one. He got a cookie and pops it up for out number two. And that'll bring up Soto. This time he got one right down the middle. And kind of just got under it. So to 0 for 2. Hard grounder to Alvarez at first, who made a good play on him, and then he bounced back softly Woo! to Garrett Cole. Our socks have been limited 
to four hits or less in three straight games for the first time since June 2nd of 1985. And they've managed the two tonight. One of them was an infield hit, and the other was a little bloop double over the head of Alvarez. Adam hit a ball hard, beat the center field. Soto hit a ball hard to Alvarez. And if you're just tuning in, that has been it. As far as hard hit balls. Gung guarding the line back at third. Alvarez way off the line at first. But Polanco's got him pretty much covered because he's over towards the line. Two out, two balls, two strikes. Beckham on deck. Up. The Trichkin Duke loosening into Penn. And looking at the velocities of Garrett Cole, he's maintained that same velocity from the first inning right through here in the seventh. That pitch is low. So an extended at bat right here for Jill. With a full count and some foul balls. That ball hit hard. Way back. He looks up. You can put it on the board. Yes. Yes, and this game is tied at two. He got a fastball in the ninth pitch of the at bat right down the middle and hit his fourth home run of the year, driving in his 11th. So Geo ties it up. A four drive of the game as a fastball right down the middle of the plate. And Cole, who had given up just four home runs in 90 innings, gives up his fifth. Ray Searage out to have a little talk with Garrett Cole. Gio got his fastball and he got it right down the middle. So here's Beckham. Gordon tonight has grounded to short and struck out. Takes first pitch strike. And of course, with that home run by Gio, the Alex Nellius family, got a donation to White Sox charities in loving memory of Ursula. It's back up the middle, off the foot. Aram's over. But we'll go to the eighth inning after this beautiful pass he put on that one by Gio Soto tied at two.
end of three. Garrett Cole, seven innings, three hits, two earned runs. Jeff Samarja, seven innings, two earned runs, no walks, seven strikeouts. And Gio Soto with a game tying home run. Brought to you by the Honda Dream Garage Sales Event. Now your Honda dealer. And Jake Patrichka comes into the ball game. He's got to go right through the heart of this Pittsburgh order. Jake, on for the 26th time, he's one and one. His ERA a little above three and a half. Opponents batting average 309, which is a high total. I got you one for three. And as I was talking earlier, it is great to see Jeff Samarja back. He's back. And dealing. One and one to count. There's a chopper two hopper. Catch him as he always does, busting it down that line. And if you're just joining us, the only base hit that was even remotely hit pretty good was off the bat of Pedro Alvarez. He got a little fastball back in the sixth inning and lined a single into right field. Outside of that, there were some duck snorts, broken bats, fists, jobs, and spend some meal money hits off some Archer tonight. Alvarez also hit a hard comebacker. Jeff turned in to a double play. That was it. Oh, and to the count. Gum had a little infield single, knocked in a run. And that's. Another soft infield single. That's two for Gung as he takes it right back up the middle. Jake tried to flag it down with his throwing arm, throwing hand, and couldn't get it done. So here comes Robin. That's going to be it for Patrichka. Falls off to the first base side and cannot get himself back in position. Gordon with a big effort, but can't get it there. So that's going to be it for Jake Patrichka. And as he walks out, we'll step out and be back after these messages. .com ballpark to unlock offers and rewards. The official U.S. Cellular Field Ballpark app. It's for your smartphone and your Android iPhone, rather. Personalize your trip to the ballpark with maps, mobile check-in, seat upgrades, and more. 
Download MLB.com ballpark today or visit WhiteSox.com slash ballpark app to learn more. And Zach Duke comes on for the 29th time. He's two and two. His ERA 376. He inherits. Gung at first base. Only one out here in the top of the eighth inning in a 2 2 tie. Big hack, no contact. And the count, nothing in one. So one on one out. Alvarez hitting just 100 against left handers this year. You have to hope that trend continues. Just due for 20. When I want to count. And in case you're just joining us. Alex Rodriguez got a couple of tonight. He now has 2,999. On a T, couldn't pull the trigger and the count one and two. That one foul. Zach Putnam pretty well loose in the bullpen. Once again, the 2 2. There he goes, the runner. That was a good break because that happened to be a very good jump. Not the fastest base runner around, but he timed it perfectly that time. Gung four for four in stolen bases. Got a decent lead. And another foul. in the on deck circle and that's one of the reasons why Zach Duke is in this one the two lefties back to back. Breaking ball softly hit in the center field. That ball was down and out of the zone, and Alvarez stayed with it, hit it off the end of the bat, and as so many before him have done tonight, he didn't hit it hard, he just threw it in the good spot. Our Mazda replay, right off the end of the bat, there's been a bucket full of these tonight. So here is Gregory Polanco. 0 for 3, he's bounced back to Samarja and then Jeff struck him out twice. Runners at the corners. They were not going to turn it anyway. The ball was hit too softly. Polanco can get it down the line. 
Polanco has yet to ground into a double play this year. So even if Gordon got the one, he wouldn't have gotten the two. But unfortunately, on the bobble, Alvarez moves into second base, and the go-ahead run crosses the plate. So that little soft fisted little ground ball just by Petrichka off the bat of Jung Ho Gong comes around the score as Sean Rodriguez comes in to pinch run. We've seen Rodriguez do just about everything in this series play all over. He's a jack of all trades for Clint Hurdle. Jordy Mercer had an infield single. He's one for three. And the count two and oh. If you're just joining us, I don't know how long it's been since I've seen a game with as many duck snorts, soft hit ground balls, finding a hole, infield hits, and in one game as we have seen from the Pirates tonight. Smarja only had two balls hit decent off him. The hard throwing Archimedes Camonero loosening in the pen. He of the 100 mile an hour Camoneros. So here comes Robin, and he's going to bring in Putnam to face Tabata, who came on to pinch run for Hart. And he wants Zach. So Zach comes in, gives up that base hit to Alvarez, puts Gung on third. He scores on the infield grounder by Polanco. Walks Mercer, he'll depart, and we'll be back. Second, Zach on for the 23rd time. He's one and two as ERA just under four. But opponents hitting just 227. 
And a couple of outs here. And one big one to get. Is Jose Tabata. Will come up to bat for the first time. He came out as a pinch runner. He's hitting an even 300. One in, two on, two out. Or the backing, one pitch, and Zach gets it done again. Boy, he's been pitching well. Meanwhile, we'll go to the bottom of the eighth, trailing 3 2. Head into the bottom of the eighth inning, Sean Rodriguez, who came out of pinch run, takes over at first base. And Archimedes, Camonero, comes to the ball game for the 30th time. Opponents are hitting a paltry 167 against him. 33 strikeouts, 11 walks, and 29 and a third. He does have a big fastball. Top of the order, Adam Eaton, Debbie Shuck, Jose Abreu. Fastball at 97. Arte playing over toward the line. He anticipated there was no way that Adam was going to be able to pull the ball, and he was right there on what normally might have fallen. Adam now one for three, and here's Shuck. He's 0 for 2 with a sacrifice bunt. We've had a couple of chances tonight if you're just tuning in. We've had several times. Man at second, nobody out. And only once we could get him in. Woo. That was back in the fourth when Abreu just hit, flipped a little double over the head of Alvarez at first. Roche got him over with a deep drive, taking him to catch him back up against the fence in center field. And then Melky. Doing a nice piece of hitting with a sacrifice fly. Then a home run by Soto. Last inning to tie it at two. And then they just scored here in the top of the eighth. Camonero signed as a free agent and 17 years old by the Marlins back in 2005. Rated by the Pirates. To the Pirates by the Marlins in February of this year. 
He always had a great arm, had some problems getting it over his, the plate at times, but Ray Searage has done a nice job with him correcting that. If you've seen all four of these games that we played against the Pirates, if you had to pick up an MVP on Pittsburgh, it'd be Ray Searage. Little comeback. Fires it across to Rodriguez. Two down. He's got this pitching staff, which is the equal of just about any in baseball. Clicking on all cylinders. There's a look at Ray. You Crafty left-hander. Don't hear a whole lot about him, but he is rated as one of the best pitching coaches around. Neil Huntington, the GM, was just singing his praises, and why not? Look what he's done to his staff. Abreu. One for three, that double and run scored. Well, it's only man really man. That ball hit deep. But off the end of the bat, got coming in just a hair too quick, and he's hot at himself. Meanwhile, we're into the ninth. Up real time highlights and pitch tracking info for your out of market fantasy players. Live or on demand at over 400 devices. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Top of the ninth inning. Chris Stewart and back to the top of the order with Josh Harrison. Pitch strike. Stewart tonight, 0 for 2. He also was hit by a pitch. They have three runs on 12 hits. We have two runs on three hits. Mark Melanson loosening up once again. He has been ever present. 
in this four game extravaganza. No swing. Two and one. No walks. Come on. Three and one. Just the second walk issued by our pitching tonight. He did figure prominently getting hit by a pitch in the fifth inning. It led to a sacrifice fly off the bat of a man coming up now. As Harrison's had a big series. Harrison, two soft singles with a sacrifice fly tonight. He's two for three. Gets a break there and a count nothing in one. Division pitchers. Tigers going to activate Victor Martinez. Tigers were rained out tonight in Cincinnati. He go. One out. Good splitter. He swung right through it. I mentioned Bryce Harper had to leave that ball game. He left with a mild hamstring strain. So here's Marte. Starling. Out in front. He's one for four. He had a little soft single back in the first inning. Scott Carroll, who was just recalled from the minor leagues, is Hector Nuesi was designated for assignment. Loosening in the pen. Now feels straight up. That equidistant. And the count nothing in two. Ned Yost wins number 411, passing Whitey Herzog for the most in Royals history. Royals defeat Milwaukee 3 to 2. They are one hot bunch. That's their fourth win in a row. Eight of their last 11. Little daylight between themselves and the Minnesota Twins. Lays off that one down low. Fair ball on the move. Can't get it. Arte just has 
great speed, wonderful acceleration out of the batter's box. And Cotter did everything he could do, but he couldn't get it there in time. He was playing back a couple of steps. He came on a few too many steps, getting it across, and Marte beats the play. And that'll bring up the man on this ball club, Andrew McCutcheon, who was one for four tonight. He had a little duck snort, broken bat single in the right field. Takes a strike to even the counted one. San Diego beats Oakland three to one. Marcus Simeon hitting at 272. For the Athletics. And the count one and two. Josh Fegley to Homer. Tonight is third. He's hitting 286. For our guys in the bottom of the ninth, the Roche, Cabrera, Ramirez. Line shot. Everybody's back. Two down. Jung Ho Gong. <laughs> two for four. RBI to run scored. Two infield singles. Close pitch. A little low. Pop up right side. Beckham calling for it, makes a catch, and that'll retire the side. All right, gang. Going to the bottom of the ninth. We need one to tie and two to win it. Official White Sox debit card only available at your local Wind Trust Community Bank. 
Go to Wintrust.com slash White Sox to learn more. Wintrust Community Bank member FDIC. Mark Melanson comes in the ball game. His ERA 193 is 0 and 1 on for the 34th time. Been successful. 22 of 23, including the last two in a row. He'll be going for his three in as many games against our Sox, but they should know him by now. Got a good overhand breaking ball. So the Pirates trying to win their eighth in a row, and the Sox trying to keep them losing our seventh. And here's Adam. Adam over two with a walk. So he's had two good at bats, a deep drive back in the fourth inning, helped get us our run. Brady was on second, nobody out. He tagged and went into third and scored on the sacrifice fly by Melky. Takes first pitch strike. And we went in and played those guys. They were on a four game winning streak. And in those four games, they only scored eight runs. Didn't check his swing, and Alfonso Marquez on the appeal said he went around. Adam didn't think so. Well, Marquez had a bad call last night that really hurt us, or could have. Took us out of an inning. That pitch is foul, but Elias says that last night marked the sixth time in Pittsburgh's last ten games that the Pirates won despite scoring three or fewer runs. According to Elias, the only other time in club history that Pittsburgh over a ten game span recorded Six or more victories in which the team scored three or fewer runs was back in August of 19 and 10. So they've been pitching and catching. Lance's well, fastball. He isn't overwhelming, but maybe Adam can get one of those breaking balls down and on the inner portion. Big swing. Besides their starters, Pittsburgh bullpen, third in the majors, in ERA, behind St. Louis and Kansas City. Had a good manager, good pitching coach. Good starters, good bullpen. Good curveball. And one out. Lanson's got that 12 to 6 breaking ball. It breaks straight down. Here's Melky. 0 for 2 with a sacrifice fly. Takes a 92 mile an hour fastball for a strike. Plans to be with us tomorrow night. First of a three game set against the Texas Rangers. Chris Sale on the bump. And that's a foul ball.
The 0 2. That was just a show me pitch. I think he wants to wipe him out on that good breaking ball. He threw that fastball out away. Didn't get a swing, however. He knew it. Backdoor slider. And a dandy. Stewart wants it away. It's a backdoor slider. Shaves off the outside corner at the knees, and that's pretty much unhittable. So two out, and here's Alexei. 0 for 3 tonight. Takes first pitch strike. And very quickly, 0 and 2. So we're down to our last bullet. Ball game is over, so we get swept. We have lost our seventh in a row. Pirates have won their eighth in a row, and we'll be back.